This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, as we turn now to a musical special, the band Dear Hoof, live in Democracy Now! studios. The influential music site Pitchfork has called Dear Hoof the best band in the world. The New York Times described them as one of the most original rock bands to have come along in the last decade. Earlier this year, Deerhoof premiered their new song, I Will Spite Survive, here on the airwaves of Democracy Now! It's their first song off their new album, Mountain Moves, Joyful Noise. Today, Dear Hoof shares some of their music and talk about what it means to make music in the age of Trump. I am joined now by two members of the band, drummer Greg Sonye and vocalist and bassist Satomi Matsuzaki. We welcome you both to Democracy Thanks Now! Thanks for having it's us. It's great Thanks to have, have you on. with us. So, <laughs> we just played a clip of I Will Spite Survive, Greg. Um, we premiered this um, with Dear Hoof. Thank talk you. about the the words, talk about what mm. made you write this song, uh, made the band decide to release this now. It's the yeah. first song on Mountain Moves. Yeah. Well, it's the first song that we premiered from Mountain Moves, because it was kind of like the thing that we wanted to say first as a way to announce the fact that we had a new record. And, and uh, we were, I mean, had you guys uh, at uh, Democracy Now! said no to our desperate plea to premiere it here, I don't know, you know, if if the uh, if our whole like publicity plan would have worked uh, as well as it uh, has, uh, it was really important to us that we be able to uh, premiere the song um, with a specific media voice that we thought was um, 
telling the stories that are missing from the mainstream. The, this, what, what the words say is, you could outlive your executioners, but you're on TV, you're expendable. So the, the, the idea there is that, you know, normally, like I'm a talking head on TV right now, but the talking heads you often see on the mainstream TV are sort of spouting um, talking points that seem to originate from lobbyists or, or from, uh, from the powerful and not whatsoever a voice of uh, you know the average uh, person in the population and so i guess the, the the idea with this song was that because these lawmakers um that that threaten us with lack of health care and and uh nuclear escalation or um the the hastening of climate change um uh, they, they tend to be old, and the pundit, pundits that that um, champion them um, and operate for them on TV tend to be old. Our fans who listen to this song tend to be young. They tend to be the much maligned uh, millennials uh, uh, who are blamed for everything that goes wrong in our society nowadays. That being the case, I wanted to write a song directed at the millennials saying, <laughs> if you can just stay alive, you know, and that's a, there's kind of like Bee Gees references to the song too, you know, like staying alive, uh, you know, which I think is a great song. The idea of staying alive, you can just do that out of spite. Um, you will actually outlive the people who are, who seem to be hell-bent on killing you and possibly turn things around. Can you read that first verse for us? Yeah. I will spite survive. You could outlive your executioners, but you're on TV. You're expendable. Sleep at night if you can stay alive. Stay alive if you can sleep at night. City breaks if you can stay awake. Let her dance all night long. Exclamation point. <laughs> so, Satomi, you come to the United States from Japan, and within a week you're touring with Deerhoof? <laughs> yeah. What, what year like, was that? <laughs> 95. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it, so this is real. over 20 years ago. How yeah. did you hook up with them? How did you know them in Tokyo? Yeah. Um, I went to shows uh, to see this band from San Francisco in Tokyo, and uh, I'm from there, so I became friends with them because I went to their shows, like, several times. And then uh, they were so nice that we just met, but they, you know, wrote me and, like, hey, come to San Francisco, and uh, we will take care of you. So I went to you know, actually, San Francisco, and then they introduced me to Deho. I want to turn to another song, Paradise Girls. Um, can you talk about this song on a previous album? Yeah. Paradise Girls uh, is like a cheerleading song for girls. I wanted to connect to girls, you know? And then um, I feel like when I play—when we play this song live, I, I feel like uh, girls are also dancing, and I have so much, like, good interaction with them. And, you know, I, I just like the feeling of uh, usually it's a sport, you know, when people are cheering and have these cheerleading girls kind of, uh, you know, the guys are enjoying the girls, you know, but then, like, girls can enjoy the cheerleading each other.
Paradise Girls, and this is Deer Hoof here on Democracy Now. Our guests are drummer and founder Greg Sonye and vocalist and bassist Satomi Matsuzaki. Um, Greg, the title of your band, your name, mm. Deer Hoof, where did it come from? Well, I'm not actually the literal founder of the band. Uh, there, there was another guy in the band who started it in uh, 1994, who although he's never been on Democracy Now! as a guest, will have a name that's somewhat familiar, because he happens to have the same name as Robert Fisk. There's a guy called Rob Fisk, started the band, big fan of animals, um, and, uh, and a big fan of uh, coming up with band names. And I don't know, he just came up with that one one day. He made it, it was, what it was was a, a little cassette. Um, that, uh, that he'd put together. It started off as Rob Fisk solo. He just played bass, made as much noise as he could, put on this little cassette, um, glued some, um, it was autumn, so he, he glued some leaves to the outside of this cassette and sort of spray painted it and uh, made about five copies. And I received one of them and immediately felt that I needed to join the band. So, Greg, uh, yeah. let's talk about Bob Dylan for a minute, because you wrote Bob a song Dylan. about Bob Dylan. Come down <laughs> here and say that. Well, I mean... I don't want to say that I wrote the song about Bob Dylan, but I may have borrowed a phrase from, uh, there was that uh, documentary about his mid-60s tour uh, of England called, um, what was it called, Don't Look Back, where he had just uh, um, incurred the ire of his purest folk fans for having gone pop. Remember, he added electric guitars. The band, you know, uh, suddenly was behind him. He was playing loud music. And, uh, and people were yelling at him, you know, were heckling him from Royal Albert Hall while he was performing. And at one point, he sort of just uh, off the cover. In, hmm? in London. Yeah, yeah, in London, exactly. And at one point, he just, you know, they're heckling, and he says, you know, come up here and say that. You know, <laughs> it is this really threatening voice, but also kind of laughing. And uh, I thought that it would be fun to, you know, do a song where Deerhoof also goes pop and, and sort of abandon our sort of like noise purist uh, beginnings and, and do a very poppy sounding song, um, you know, possibly incurring the ire of our longtime fans, but twist the, twist the line a little bit so that instead of uh, come up here and say that it was come down here and say that where as though... Um, you know, it was inspired a lot by all of these town halls with the ACA uh, repeal uh, threats. Just the, the droves of people that were suddenly showing up to town halls, and, and particularly GOP politicians were terrified of their own constituents and, you know, were, were canceling their meetings or sending proxies or just, you know, not taking any questions and leaving in a hurry. And uh, I just thought, you know, when you have... Um, whether it be politicians or, or pundits, pundits on, uh, on uh, mainstream television who, who uh, assure you that there is some mathematical economic reason that it will benefit us all to give a tax break to billionaires, uh, that I would like them to come down here and say that. Say that to the person who makes an average wage. Say, come say it to my face, you know, and, and we'll discuss whether or not uh, any of us actually believe that. So I guess the song was, was uh, meant in that spirit.
down here and say that. That's Deerhoof here at Democracy Now! And we're joined by two of the members of the band, one of the co-founders, Greg Sonye, and vocalist and bassist, Satomi Matsuzaki. Um, so you've been doing this now for decades, and we're now living in the era of Trump. Um, do you feel you have a different responsibility now? Do you feel like your audience is feeling more urgently about what's happening now? I think uh, we, you know, our attitude towards politics always the same. You know, yeah, we, we, exactly. we we were punk, you we are kind of punk rock spirit. You know, mm. we, uh, and also like we are very, you know, diverse too. You know, I'm like I'm immigrant and everything, and so I think it's good that now we, like we can uh, play music and actually get together and actually. Uh, have a voice out, you know, together, mm -hmm. and then it's, uh, yeah, it's it's not so different, mm -hmm. but I feel like now it feels more like emotional or like internationally. I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like I like to connect with Asian countries where you know this all this North Korea threat. You know, actually, it's not just America who's getting threat, but if. You know, I don't want my parents who live in Tokyo to die, you know, because of what's happening right now. I feel like it's important that, that we, you know, speak out. Mm. You also covered Public Enemies' Fight the Power in a Planned Parenthood Benefit album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so Tommy uh, was Flavor Flav, and uh, John, our guitar player, did, uh, was Chuck T. Fight the Power! Fight the Power! Fight the power. What an incredible song. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, Public Enemy is a great example. I mean, it's like, it, it, are we in the age of Trump? I feel like we're in the age of Public Enemy. That's how I feel as a musician, as a, as a music fan and a music uh, performer. I mean, <laughs> the, the age of Public Enemy to, almost means more to me than uh, the, the age of the current president. And, and the, the, um, the oppression that was described in Chuck D's lyrics in the late 80s um, remains completely relevant. I mean, that music does not sound dated at all if you listen to it now. It has to do with shutting down mega corporate power. It has to do with don't believe the hype, you know, uh, 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 which uh, should be near and dear to uh, your heart because it has to do with mainstream news versus, you know, telling something the, you know, the way it is. You also talk about the normalization of Donald Trump in the media. Yeah, uh, but uh, I guess my feeling, I kind of agree with Satomi that, that from our perspective, Trump represents a, uh, obviously an escalation. For instance, um, civilian deaths in Syria have dramatically escalated, but it's not like they were zero under Obama, you know. Um, it's true that um, his rhetoric against North Korea, North Korea is um, stupider. But it's not as if he's the one who invented nuclear bombs uh, that, I mean, North Korea has known for a long time that we've got, you know, a military base right next door and lots of bombs pointed at them. Um, but many of the, um, many of the issues that, that um, for instance, a, a band um, or anybody who sort of lives hand to mouth uh, feels in our country um, are actually quite similar to how they were last year and the year before. And uh, um, so the current president um, represents a, a more crass and crude and exaggerated presentation of the same philosophies, um, uh, be they uh, ne neoliberalism or, or um, extreme corporate rights. Um, or extreme militarism, American exceptionalism. Um, I'm just saying a lot of stuff that I hear on your program. <laughs> and that, that, uh, that uh, actually, you know, there, there's also a, a, uh, a potential in 2017 right now because everybody is now galvanized around these issues. I mean, 
you know, one candidate last year proposed the outrageous idea that we should have uh, socialized medicine, that we should have single-payer health care. Um, and it sounded like an outrageous idea when he first brought it up, and what a nutso, you know. Now, guess what? The, you know, almost the entire population of the country agrees, and it's a mainstream point of view. It's not mainstream in the news. It's not mainstream uh, among uh, the sitting politicians. But it's, uh, you know, I, I feel that, that the age of— You're talking about Bernie Sanders. Uh, well, you know the guy, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the age of the current president is simply a, a, a chance for people to be even more galvanized about— issues that may have been kind of on the back burner or only only brought uh, to the attention of Democracy Now! listeners are now front burner issues in many cases. So, Tomi, talk about Exit Only. Okay. <laughs> so, Exit Only, I wrote the lyrics because uh, um, when I remembered when I got my green card, how hard it was in, like, even at at the time, you know, it was 20 years ago or so. Now it's getting harder and harder. And it, you, I wrote this song before Trump even became president. So it's such an irony. Like, <laughs> I wrote this song and I'm like talking about, you know, oh, it was so hard to get the green card, but it's even harder. It's crazy because, you know, USA is one of the hardest countries to get visa or anything. So many uh, Japanese uh, friends uh, just left, you know, U.S. after, you know, s you know certain trial, like they <laughs> uh, applied again and again to get mm. visa. But yeah, I'm and just saying it's not easy to come here. Mm. And that's exit only. Exit only, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, you pay money. It's easy to get extend the visa in America. But it's hard to get the real, actual, actual legal status, you know. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, so bye-bye, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is exit only. That's Exit Only, and that's the band Deerhoof, and they perform that in our studios right here at Democracy Now! Um, I want to end with Mirror Monster, Greg. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> the words are, uh, uh, we are riders in the cavalry and, uh, um, and we'll soon be, um, what's the words? We'll soon be the victims of our yeah. imitators. I guess it was a, a, a kind of an idea of uh, <laughs> how incredibly obvious it is that if you take a militaristic approach to the rest of the world, the rest of the world will rightly so feel threatened militarily and feel that uh, deterrence is needed and therefore need to build up their own nuclear arsenal. And we are right now on that hair trigger of, uh, of um, experiencing um, the possibility of the you know, termination of the human race as a result of that uh, via our dealings with North Korea. And uh, I was actually specifically, I mean, this was from a couple years ago that we made this home maybe three years ago, but it was, you know, pretty much as true under Obama as it is under Trump. He's just um, more crude about it. Um, a, uh, I mean, actually, I remember the talk that you did with Chomsky um, in Boston. Uh, it was a couple months ago where he was very detailed in his recounting of the Bush years and in 2005 how Bush, you know, there, there was a treaty between North Korea and the U.S. that was working just fine and th the threats were mutually deterred um, and the threat was reduced of nuclear war. Um, and at, at a certain point in 2005, Bush decided to break the treaty and once again um, sort of buzz the borders of North Korea with planes and, and later boats. And uh, as a result, North Korea, oh, well, okay, so you're not following the treaty, then we're going to go back to building up our nuclear weapons. And uh, so this idea that if you take a bully's approach to the rest of the world, you will likely <laughs> fall victim to them needing, feeling the need to take a bully approach back towards you. Mirror Monster, and the band is Deer Huff in our studios here at Democracy Now! Their latest album, Mountain Moves, is released in September of 2017. Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you and for having us. Satomi, thank yeah. you very much. Thank for you. Being it's been with a thrill. Us. This is Democracy Now! The band is Deerhoof. Here on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us. If you want to go to our whole section on music and resistance, or overall art and resistance, go to democracynow.org. Thanks so much.